soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy, holy name. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Lord's Day morning, particularly to this day in which we honor and celebrate 50 years of worship and service in this place. And uh, the word of God declares that the earth of the Lord is the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Our choir is going to minister in song, and then after which our deacons will come and lead us to the throne of grace. give God praise this morning by lifting our voices. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can have a seat. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Let us have a word of prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for keeping us and bringing us all the way to this, this, this point where we find ourselves. We're celebrating 50 years of being at this particular facility, which was built 1973-74. And you've been with us, and you've grown us, and you've kept us, and you've blessed us. And we, we're here to celebrate that and to say thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we know that we didn't do it by ourselves. It took a whole lot to get to where we were, even then and even now. Starting at Kane Street, you blessed us to move to this great edifice. You blessed us with good pastors and minister leaders, and, and we can't count all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Lord, we ask that you bless us today and bless those that have preached the word and bless those that have heard the word and received the word and, and did what the word says to do. We know that you're not finished working with us. We got to continue, continue to do things that are pleasing to you. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless all our ministries, our pastor, our assistant pastors, sons of the house, our deacons, our deaconess, our ushers, all of our ministry leaders. Lord, bless them with wisdom and understanding. Lord, bless our members, for we are one body in Christ. And what we do is should be pleasing to you. Continue and lead us and guide us in the way that you'd have us to go. Bless our service today. Keep us in your loving kindness. We ask these things in the mighty, marvelous, and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. In his name, we offer this prayer. And I say amen, and amen, and an amen. Thank you for joining in with us in our devotion. Special celebration today. and We're glad to have everybody here. This time, I'll turn you back over into the hands of the choir. Good morning. We bring you greetings on this 50th anniversary of relocation to this uh, spot here on Albemarle Road, and we've been asked to recognize the visitors today. Uh, we want to thank those that are visiting with us on social media, but we want to ask the visitors here in the sanctuary if you would stand to be recognized at this time, please, any visitors. Amen. 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 Um, we want to uh, take this time to thank you for visiting with us this morning. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with us at Morningstar on this special occasion. Uh, we hope that your soul is richly blessed as Reverend Pittman brings the morning message this morning. And we want to thank you again for coming. You may be seated and have a blessed day in the Lord. I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Marcus Bailey. This is my lovely wife, Rosetta. Um, and we just so excited. We lost our heads. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, morning star. 50 years of being in this house. And today we're going to have a little conversation with some people. I'm just going to guide the conversation. I ain't going to say too much. 
But this time, I'm going to ask our conversationists to come forward. I'm going to ask Mr. William King to come on down. <laughs> We're going to ask Dr. Obie McNair to come on over. Miss Courtney and Mr. I'm going to say that right. Mr. and Mrs. Kendall Gilner to come down. Ms. Lauren Johnson, are you in the house this morning? And Mr. Aiden Grant. Man, send me to come down this morning. panelists a hand. <laughs> you know, we dedicated Morningstar Baptist Church this location in 1974. And I'm again, I'm gonna begin with Mr. King. Mr. King, in 1974, just think back. Where were you? What were you doing? And what was the atmosphere surrounding you? All right, good morning, morning, sir. Good morning. 1974, I was a freshman at the I Love My Dear Old College right. Home. <laughs> the I Love Wherever I May Roll. And I had just started playing the organ at Morningstar. We remember Dr. M.K. Nelson because he would always put on those Christmas operettas well, I was King Herod one year, I think the first year here, and I did, go find the child and bring me words of praises. I'm not going to do any more. <laughs> and I remember... I don't think this stuff talking about working, but... Deacon Leroy King, Deacon Clifton Jackson, Deacon J.B. Robinson, Deacon Hezzy Fair, Deacon Donaldson. I mean, good deacons. Now, we got good deacons now, but those were some good deacons. And in that choir back there, Miss Ziola Matthews, Miss Mabel Nicholson, oh, I can just go on and on. But the best thing I remember about Morning Star is those, when we have those crusades in that corner right over there, in that, on that side over there. I asked God for my job. Dr. Nelson would get us, ask God what you want, commit him to it. And I asked him for that job at Walton. I worked there 34 years, Amen. Amen. 34 Amen. years, and I'm retired now. All I do now is wait on two checks. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. King. Now, you're sitting in this building here this morning, but this building would not be possible without the hard work and dedication of one particular person, Dr. Obi McNair. Doc, tell us. Thank you very much. What's your story behind this? Well, uh, it's going to be brief, but uh, I grew up in West Jackson, sub number two. And at that time, Dr. Nelson lived out there, and I actually was going to church at Northside Missionary Baptist Church, and Dr. Nelson's uh, his wife, Carol, and I were classmates, so I kind of knew Dr. Nelson. But anyway, uh, it was uh, the summer of 1973, I was playing football, and uh, I said, well, I got to work out, and I was working out sometimes with a guy named Alec McNeil, who's a member here. Uh, Officer McNeil, I don't see him. But anyway, uh, they said, uh, uh, it's going to be X amount of dollars. I said, gosh, you know, Alec has went up on his prices. <laughs> so a, a friend of mine mentioned, he said, man, you don't have to do all that working out uh, in the gym. Why don't you do construction work? 
that, you know, that, that'll make you strong. As a matter of fact, my grandfather has a project that he's working on over in Shady Oaks. I said, well, what is it? He said, they're building a church. I said, really? I said, what's the name of it? They said, Morningstar. I said, how much they paying? <laughs> so anyway, I took a job that summer to work here. This was the summer of, of 1973. And basically, it was a, a guy named Charlie King. Uh, he was the contractor who hired me. And I uh, started working. I think uh, we were just putting up the bricks here. And my job at first was to haul bricks to the, to the, the bricklayers. And I did that. And one of the things I realized that construction work is tough. <laughs> Man, we would get here at 6 in the morning and you had a 30 minute break in the, in, in the mid morning and then 30 minutes for lunch and I'd be tired, really tired. But I remember doing a lot of work right here. Mainly it was, they called me a laborer and I helped the, the brick layers and stuff. And I worked maybe for a month and they said, uh, Son, we want you to go up on the roof, I think it was this <laughs> roof here, and put some, t some towels and stuff. And I got up there, and it's July, and it was 100 degrees, and I started getting dizzy, like I was going <laughs> to fall off the roof. And I came home that evening, and I said, Mom, I'm not going to back to work anymore. She said, why? I said, they put me on the roof. Do you know how hot it was? She said, I understand, son. But anyway, that was my experience. I worked here maybe a month. And uh, just amazing to me that years later I became a member, uh, can't, got on the deacon board, been past chairman. I mean, it just I never thought that I would see all of this happen in my life. But uh, it's a wonderful edifice, and you can see the work was done. The, the, it's just outstanding. And from my understanding, uh, the the, the uh, uh, what is it? What do you call it? Architectural. Design was uh, Dr. M.K. Nelson. He did this, and uh, it's just a fabulous thing, and I'm glad to be a part of it and can talk this morning. Thank, Thank you. you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. We, we appreciate your hard labor <laughs> and keeping us cool in here today. All right. We're going to switch gears just a little bit to Mr. and Mrs. Kendall Gilner. They have a unique story because they both came up here at Morningstar Baptist Church as youth, and they got married here at Morningstar Baptist Church. And I'm going to turn it over to Kendall and Courtney right now to, to talk about their experience growing up, um, their upbringing, and how did the church help them get to where they are today. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I won't steal too much of my wife's thunder, but I will tell a little bit about uh, my side of the story of how I came here and how we met and, uh, and then a little bit about where we are now. Um, if I had to give a number on it, um, I've been a part of Morningstar for about 34 years. Um, I was born here. And uh, at six years old, I was, I, I was officially joined as a member by way of baptism, six years old. Uh, and I remember a conversation my mom had with me at six. She said, all right, now that you're a member, you got to do something in the church. You got to get involved. Uh, you can either be an usher or you can join the choir. Now, I don't, uh, I don't even sing in the shower. <laughs> I don't, I'm not much of a singer, so that left uh, the youth usher board. And... Uh, uh, I elected to join the ushers. I joined around six years old. And we always have a debate, my wife and I, about uh, exactly when we met each other. But uh, my guess is it was probably, it was single digits, something like that. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine years old is when, you know, we became aware of each other. Uh, for, for me, and I think for my wife too, the youth usher ministry was probably what cemented us here at the church. Uh, at that time, there was, I mean, during the peak, there was probably 30, maybe even 40 of us young people that uh, we were really rooted together in the youth usher ministry. Uh, and I have to acknowledge uh, at least my primary memory, which was uh, Ms. Don Jones, uh, giving credit to her, as well as the other 
Youth Usher leaders. Uh, there was Miss Taylor, uh, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Fortner, uh, Deacon Williams, uh, and I'm miss, I know I'm missing some, but uh, those people were like our parents uh, when we came to church. You know, it was, you know, take your hat off when you come inside here, or don't you know bubble gum, or anything like that. They were your parents, and you already knew that you weren't going to act up when you came in here. We were here on Saturdays, Sundays, during the week. Uh, all of that was through the Youth Usher Ministry, and we had a chance to go on trips together. We would, you know, Ms. Jones would pack a bus and we would drive to Atlanta or uh, Washington, D.C. And that was just times that we had an opportunity to spend with each other. And uh, I give that credit to uh, giving the opportunity to meet my wife, uh, future wife. We spend a lot of time together. Uh, fast forward into um, much, much, much later when it came time for myself to graduate and my wife to graduate, we took those memories with us. Uh, you know, I left, I left the state, she went and did her own thing, but uh, those memories stuck with us, which is what caused us to later reconnect when I moved back into state. And uh, not long after that, we decided to get married. Uh, from there, the rest is history. I'll let her kind of tell her story, but uh, I do, like I said, I want to give credit to those who, uh, those leaders in the church that, that brought us youth together. I do think that that made a very big difference. Um, in the experience that we had here uh, as young adults and growing up. Well, my first recollection of Kendall is at 12, but he could he could have sworn that <laughs> we've been dating since, you know, single digits, so I don't know, <laughs> but we'll roll with it. But um, I, I will say that uh, my... Uh, first experience, uh, Dr. Nelson was the one who baptized me, and just like Miss Gilner, uh, my mom said the same thing. She was like, you can either join the choir or you can join the usher board, but you can't just sit on the pew. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm not singing. So usher board it is, and Miss Taylor, actually, uh, she and Miss Franklin uh, came for you to buy Miss Franklin. They took me in right on the front porch out there, uh, and I started working the next fourth Sunday, and I will say that with Kendall, um, we have met some great friends. Um, we are still friends. Um, we try to support each other as much as possible, near and far. Um, like Justin Davis, he, he got married, and um, we all decided we're going. It didn't matter how far it was, so, you know, when we got there, we saw Scotty, of course, he was there, and we took a group picture, we was excited to see each other, and of course, on, on social media, we tagged it as, you know, Miss um, Jones's kids of the Usher board, and um, of course, that makes, that makes her happy, but um, yeah, without a lot of you all here, even Sunday school, Miss Davis, um, I don't know how often Kendall went to Sunday school, but um, <laughs> we, we we still saw each other along along those along those those hallways, and you know became good friends. So um, Morning Star definitely was the primary reason why we we are even together um, today. And uh, you all make sure. I, Every time we see any church members out, especially uh, the, old, the older generation, the more wiser generation, they just say, keep, keep on keeping on, or we praying for you, keep going, love to see you. So the encouragement is definitely what keeps us motivated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, as you can tell, all this is developed through connections from Mr. King. Dr. McNair working, to Courtney and Kendall growing up with individuals in the church, which leads us to the future. We have Mr. Aiden Grant and Ms. Lauren Johnson. And I'm gonna start this question with Lauren and Aiden, you kind of follow up after her. But Ms. Lauren, uh, you're here at Morningstar now. And uh, my dad always says, the children are our future. 
And you as a youth right now and future leaders, not only at Morningstar and future leaders in society as a whole, tell the church your vision for how you want Morningstar to assist you as becoming that future leader and to give you that support that you need. Um, so in the future, I hope that we can kind of rebuild and restore our church back to like the post COVID, I mean the pre COVID, how it was just like doing all the events and all the community service, having children's church, going on little trips with the different organizations, just kind of going back to our roots and like going, expanding beyond that. So not just like going, um, not just like going to Sunday school and then everyone coming up in here, but like going to Sunday school and then having an opportunity to go in children's church and kind of have church that's a little bit smaller for our age, but just be able to have people come in and speak to us and make it direct for what we're going through. And like having people come in, other members of the church come in and like tell their stories and how this church has helped them in ways that we can bring our church into our community. Maybe doing like community outreach and like service project, food boxes, going up and helping to clean up stuff. Just like bringing the word of God into our community, but also like going back to how they get to go to Atlanta and traveling and stuff and just using the church as a way to branch out into the community and like show us the world through God. Great answer, great answer. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you wanna add on to what Ms. Johnson just stated? Of course, Rox. Well, let me, y'all let me get going. <laughs> well, I think um, as a youth, I think we should be able to be more involved in the planning and activities that we have going on at the church. And I know VBS, Vacation Bible School, um, that's planned by, I think, solely by Ms. Daphne. Hey, t- give, us a, give us a little wet. You don't want to give, you don't. stand up, stand up. Oh, okay, well, she's, she don't want to stand. But I know that she's over that entire um, operation and because she's my mom, that means I'm kind of over it too. And I know when mama say do something, y'all, you gotta do it. But um, yeah, and I love to be able to decorate and plan and help set up and really get involved in making VBS what it is. And that's just so, you know, fun. And it makes me feel like, you know, I'm building this. And I have a say in what's going on and what we're learning about and what we're doing. So I feel like as youth, we should be able to have more decisions and activities and stuff that we're going on with. You heard it from the youth. They want to be involved. They want to get things done. They want to help our community. So it's time for us to get that back in gear to post-COVID. Y'all need to give another hand for that one. Now, I just want to say thank, thank you all for participating. This wasn't going to be a long segment, but we have one more special presentation. Um, um, connections. Kendall and Courtney had their connection, and my generation had a connection as well. And this next person that we uh, had a video with connected our lives, connected Pastor Johnson, Nita Jameson, Cheryl McCoy, everybody that grew up in that era. And I'm gonna ask that the video team put that up for us. And I'm just let you see for yourself. Conversation with longtime member, youth choir leader and deaconess, Sister Ernestine Jones. We asked her what was the overall feeling around the church at that time, as they were about to move into the new church. Oh, they were so happy. We were all so happy. I was a pad on the state. I would raise our, our money to help. Did Miss Mama start passing? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's right. I raised a thousand dollars. The pearl come after me. She, the next year, she raised a thousand. Then the next year after then, I raised nine hundred. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. 
and, and we, we just had a good time back then. That was Mrs. Jones talking about her fundraising efforts to support the newly built structure as a participant of the famous Ms. Morning Star pageant. Next, Mrs. Jones expounded on her tireless work serving here at Morning Star Church. And I would take those children, because, you know, I worked with those young people for, you know, for 20 years, Miss Lockett and I. I remember. And it, start, it started with me at the old church. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I was a queen then for raising money for adding the rule on to the old church. Wow. And I was work with the Sunday school back then. Mrs. Jones shares the first time she saw the new church. It was so bad. Oh, we were so glad. <laughs> I was so happy. We were so glad to go into our new church. Mrs. Jones shares a little history about Pastor Johnson. I became mother mm -hmm. of, of the church. Yes, ma'am. But I, I saw in the choir first. And you know, my pastor, he, he was in the choir when I was young for, for the 6 to 18. Yes, ma'am. He was un, under me. He, I think he was 10 years old when he came in and got in the choir. And my husband, he, he was young to us, you know. Sunday school teach, and, and I was over in the choir, Miss Lockett and I. But then Miss Miss Lockett passed. She was with her mother, and then then, then uh, we uh, you know, I just had it all by myself then. <laughs> so and I worked with her twenty years. Mm -hmm. And I got a trophy. They gave me a trophy for working all the time. Mrs. Jones shares more about her tenure here at Morning Star. I sung in the choir. Then I, I worked with the Sunday school class number 10. Oh, yeah, I, I miss all of that. Mrs. Jones shares words of encouragement to the youth members of the church and the entire church body. Keep the good. Put God ahead and keep on working hard like I wished. And I miss all of that. I love all of them. Oh, I'm so proud of my church. My, I ain't saying I miss being there with them. Yes, ma'am. But I love them. Oh, so much. I tell her I can't tell you. I'm so proud of my past and I'm proud of. Rock, my dick of rock. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> we call y'all, we call you rock. Yes, ma'am. It don't, it don't stop. It don't stop. Oh, uh, yeah. It's fine. Put God ahead. Keep on working hard. Sing hard. Because <laughs> we have a Christ full of Just keep the good work. And be proud of the, the pastor we got now. Keep on, keep it on. Yes, ma'am. Put him, they can cause together and stick together. Together, we are, we all stood, and we're going to keep it, always keep it up. Because it said, the scripture said, together we stand, but divided to fall. But stick together, put God ahead. And, and, and that's the way you're going to make it. Mrs. Jones shares that she still got it and sings this little light of mine. Light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine where she I go. Stop. I'm gonna let it shine, let me where I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I love to talk about him everywhere.
when I go, I'm so yes, I'm ma'am. so content. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's it. <laughs> I love yes, him ma'am. so much. I love him so yes, much. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I get, I get, I get happy up here. I get happy. Oh, yeah. yes. Ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Jones, for your faithful and dedicated service. May God continue to bless you. Y'all give Miss Ernestine Jones a hand. <laughs> Again, this concludes our conversation. We thank Mr. William King, Dr. Obed McNair, Brother Aiden Grant, Ms. Lauren Johnson, Ms. Courtney Gildner, and Mr. Kendall Gildner. Thank you for agreeing to participate in this conversation. And I hope it was beneficial to you all. And this is just the first of many we will have. Thank you all.
for us to be here this morning as we celebrate these 50 years of God using this church and ministry at this location. And uh, I do want to take the time this morning to uh, recognize uh, one of our members who's here with us this morning, uh, Sister Janice Gibbs and her husband are with us this morning. Amen. She's sitting on this side. Uh, love you, Sister. Yes, indeed. We're so glad to have you all this morning. A brother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Man, listen, I, call, I got that one mixed up, man. I got to get that right. But listen, so glad to see you all, man. And uh, glad to have you all uh, worshiping with us on today. Amen, amen. Uh, this morning, we do want to take the time to uh, uh, highlight some of the great history of our church. Uh, I won't go through all of the, the history of our church, but uh, certainly uh, during the time of our uh, sixth uh, pastor uh, who led this church in a very real way, uh, Reverend P.E. Lott. Uh, the word is that uh, the church grew immensely uh, during his time, great, great preacher in his own mindset. And, and uh, the church needed to uh, expand and they bought property behind uh, the church and, and uh, was preparing to erect and to add on. And, uh, but then it was decided uh, that because of the vastness of the uh, membership growth, uh, that they needed to identify another space. And uh, uh, I'm told through uh, 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 communications uh, over the years that uh, one of the very first properties that were looked at uh, was a little property sit right on the corner of uh, Highway 49 and, yeah, Ridgeway, uh, uh, where uh, Mount Moriah is right now. And, uh, it was first looked at that as a potential piece of property for the church. And, but later it was discovered that this property, which sits at 3420 Albemarle Road, will be the best place uh, uh, to build this brand new church. Uh, some historians have argued that it was 25000 but most would agree that it was approximately $6,000 that was spent for the property here at this location. And, uh, and this was a brand new community. Uh, people were building their homes in, in this community and uh, the number of members of our church. And uh, uh, I just uh, happened to see uh, uh, Brother and Sister Collins are very much uh, fixtures of this community and, and everybody in this community know them. Uh, Brother uh, uh, Collins was one of our, uh, uh, probably is one of the, the only last living trustees that, that were initially here. And, uh, and we certainly thank God for, for his service and as well as Sister Collins served in our, uh, our finance ministry and still does today. And, uh, and so I just wanted to give you a feel for, for what was happening during that time. Uh, Pastor Lott would, would uh, ultimately lead them to, into uh, to identifying property, but it was actually under Sterling Jones, uh, the great pastor out of Detroit, uh, who led them in the purchasing of this property. And uh, and after the property, there were uh, room that would be made to build. And uh, it was not until he resigned and, and then the church elected uh, the Reverend Dr. M.K. Nelson became pastor in March of 1970. 
And uh, as Dr. McNair had alluded to earlier, uh, who helped to draw up plans to, to build such an emphasis. And uh, uh, Pastor uh, Nelson had spent much time in, in Dallas and in Texas during that time. And, uh, and he saw something of, of a similar idea and, and brought it and, and, and used it in a magnificent, magnificent way. And then uh, uh, 1974, uh, the church was finished and we were preparing to march in. And, uh, and I do want to take the time uh, to recognize uh, all of those persons who marched with us from the, uh, or who uh, rather marched in, I, I was not a member at that time, but who marched in from, from the old church to this church. And if you're present, I just want you to stand. If you were members then from the old church and marched into the new church, amen, somebody. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Listen, I want you to see that the, uh, the, the hard work and the time that was done, uh, as a matter of fact, you've probably heard me say before uh, that when they were building the church, uh, these beams that you see that cross over us, uh, they fail. And, uh, and it set, the, set us back a while to, in order uh, to pull it back up and then to, to restart. And uh, uh, monies was raised and uh, plates were sold. As a matter of fact, I can still remember Sister Jenny Moore showing me a plate in her house uh, where it had the picture of what this church was. No, it had a picture of the old church and a picture of the pastor at that time uh, was Sterling Jones. And they were selling plates at that time to buy this property. And uh, rich, rich, rich history here. And, uh, and these were not people that, that had a golden spoon, uh, uh, but they saved their nickels and dimes and they, they cooked chicken and fried chicken and, and did all they could. We, we had ticket sales and all that kind of thing to make sure that we would have an emphasis today. And my brothers and sisters, that's the reason why when it came to celebration, there had to be something said because God's been so good to us uh, and, uh, and kept us and kept us together and uh, uh, I, 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 I was not here, I was in the military at the time, but in 1988, uh, uh, the, uh, the, being, the half a million dollars it cost to build the church. Uh, by that time we paid off, it was right at a million dollars uh, and paid off the indebtedness of the church and, and free of debt and, 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 and I, I want to argue, hadn't occurred much more debt ever since that time. And, uh, and I remember back in the, the 70s, uh, I mean, in, in 1997, uh, we did some more work, uh, a renovation uh, of the church and to the gym and put uh, walls up and uh, gym curtains and flooring and goals and uh, put new lighting within the church. And uh, a matter of fact, that was the, the, one of the last major renovations that, that was done under uh, Dr. Nelson. And, uh, and then I came to the church in 2002, and there was already a plan that was in place uh, to renovate the bathrooms, to renovate the baptismal area upstairs and uh, the hallways. And uh, my goodness, uh, uh, over these last 22 years, we have touched practically every fabric of this church. I, I have it right, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Deacon we, we spent right at $2 million in renovating this whole church. And matter of fact, the only thing that has not been touched is the wood that's in here and the bricks in these walls, but practically everything else, uh, the back of the pews uh, uh, are still the same. We just replaced the, the seats to them. We've done reflooring all over the place. Uh, all, all I'm trying to tell you is that God's been mighty good to Morningstar. God's been mighty good to Morningstar. But I, I want to suggest y'all uh, that today I'm not just focusing on the building. But God's been good to the church as a people. Uh, it's one thing to celebrate a building, but a building won't make a way out of no way. Uh, a building won't minister to people, but it takes the church. Uh, the Bible calls it the Elkhasia, the called out ones. And, and we are the body of Jesus Christ. The text says that we are his bride. And my brothers and sisters, what makes us the church is not just where we go to to church, but who we are 
the church. And my brothers and sisters, I want to suggest y'all uh, that Morningstar has been a very much a fabric of this community. Uh, Mr. King mentioned that the crusades for Christ that we would have out. And, and as a youngster growing up here, I lived down the road. And uh, uh, I would often, it was my task to help come and set up chairs for every night of the crusade. And, and, and you know, back in that day, didn't nobody bother you? You, you went out and had church. You had to worry about nobody shooting and nobody coming to cuss you out. But listen, God protected us. And listen, and in the midst of that, souls got saved. Folk, folk got changed even within the community. And and, uh, and I want to suggest y'all, that's something to celebrate. And I want to argue, that didn't just happen that year. God has still been moving a bong morning star. God has still been adding to his church. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, we've taken time where we've, we've gone out, we've given turkeys and hams out uh, across the years, and uh, uh, we've been a benefit to our community, even in the time of COVID, and making sure the community had water, and uh, people will send money and send uh, 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 gifts to the church so that we could cast it out to the community. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, there are so many ministries and so many ways that we have been a blessing. And and, and it's one of my prayers. Uh, the, uh, I, I did a whole lot of stuff, but I won't get to that. But uh, one of my prayers uh, has been is that our church will make a difference within our community. And, and uh, thank God for folk like Sister Davis and that committee who, who minister after school and they, they go out and they, 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 they minister to, to these schools and uh, even those that we've not adopted, other schools have called upon us to help them as well. And uh, we have our mission ministry who goes and take food out to the uh, different hospitals so that when people are waiting in those waiting rooms that, uh, you know, it takes a lot of money to sit in the hospital room these days and, and, uh, and, and to, that, that people may have something to, to munch upon a, a food pantry and, and, and once a year we give our clothing within uh, uh, within the, uh, the the whole church contributes it and we give all you got to do is to come in and pick what you want listen help me somebody I, 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 I what I'm just trying to say y'all is that we've been a community church and uh, and I pray that we will continue to do so even for another 50 years but I want to argue y'all we can talk about what we've done. But the real challenge is, are we willing to keep on doing it? Are we willing to rise up and come together and continue? Because that's what this thing is all to be about. Not just what God did 50 years ago, but look with great anticipation for what God shall do another 50 years. Maybe dead and gone, but I know the same God that brought us this far by faith is the same God that shall continually lead us on. Pray for this church. Pray for its pastor. Pray for its members. Pray for its leader. Pray that God himself uh, will send the harvesters for the fields are white, uh, but the laborers are few. <laughs> amen, amen. This time, uh, I've asked uh, our senior uh, uh, minister, son of the house, uh, Reverend uh, Clifton Jackson, I've asked him to come this morning and that he will uh, give us a prayer of dedication. I don't know about you, but y'all, this is a time of rededicating, recommitting myself, not only to Christ, but to the work and the cause of Christ. And we're going to ask him to come in his own special way. I'm going to ask that you would stand at this time and let us go unto the Lord in prayer. Let the church say amen. amen. I can't hear good. Amen. Talk back to me if you can. Amen. It's good to be here. It is good to see you and it is to review you. Amen. You get it on the way home. Amen. So much has been said and so many truths I have enjoyed the Ivel. What about you? I asked 
for your prayers because in this life some rain must fall behind every dark cloud. Hallelujah anyhow. There is a silver lining. Now pastor I been to school, I heard what you said, and I don't like to be disobedient, but I'm a little old school. If you take this from me, I'm through. You know, I came up in this church under Dr. P.E. Lott, better known as Cud Lott. Everybody was cool. You hear me? Amen. If you take that from me, I'm through. Let me say this, my latest recording is about 15 or 20 different pastors of this city. Cudlott Lott is one of them. Dr. M.K. Nelson is one. Sterling Jones is shun up is one. Span and all of them who I came under. I thank God for our pastor we have now. Give him a round of applause. I'm almost through. But it's something about morning star. I never shall forget. <clears throat> it was something that when you came, you feel like coming. Are you listening to me? And they could sing hymns and, and they could pray. We don't got too modern now. If you help me in a verse of a hymn, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to do a little bit I don't supposed to do this until they release it, but I'm going to do a little bit of it today. The Spirit tell me to do it. I don't know when I'm going to get back here. Amen. Amen. And you don't neither. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many old school here? <clears throat> don't fool me now. Now, <clears throat> let me say this to you. Those of you who sit in there and back here, wherever you might be, if the Lord hadn't done nothing for you, right. here you didn't wake up on your own this morning, and you sitting in those pews, and, and you so sophisticated, so this and that and the other, just move over two or three seats and let me get my praise on. Because God been good to me. It does not matter because what I'm going through. But through it all, hallelujah anyhow, I
spirit come. Come on, come on. Away. Every head bow. Our Father. Here we are. You have allowed all of us by your grace and your mercy. First of all, you've been good. You've been better to us. We have been to our own self. Here we are in morning star. The walls look like jasper, but the streets is not gold. Come here. And let us abide. Here we are this morning. As my mind, yeah, 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 hmm, roll back. Come here, P. Lot. Tell me what you see in the city. I heard 12 gig. Is that their lot? Bought it there. Mm -hmm. Come here, Sterling Jones. Come here, Dr. MK. How is it? It is in heaven. Come on, son. Let me show you around. Oh, Lord, now, Lord. Look on, morning star. The harvest is great. But the labors are few. They don't sing like they used to sing. Oh, Lord, they don't, yeah, pray like they used to pray. But help us, guide us, and protect us in time like these. Thank you. Keep us in your care. When I come down to the Jordan, do me one favor. I don't want you to move my pillow, but just turn my bed around and I'll be so careful to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. Come here, Pastor Pope. Are you singing him there? One thing I know. Y'all gonna help me? Sure, been born. One thing. Y'all trying to fool me. But God been good to you. Tell your neighbor, move over four or five seats and let me get my praise on. I done died one time. No more. I don't die. Help me. 
ain't gone. God bless you. Keep on telling you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, I want to thank you. If you've done something for you, it's done for me. Yeah. What you got for me? Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. Amen. Amen. tell you, there is only one Clifton Jackson. Amen. Amen. We certainly thank God for him and for him to be a part of the history of our church. And we certainly, certainly thank God for him today. Uh, we have uh, this morning a special guest uh, who is certainly no stranger around Morningstar. Uh, he's grown up uh, when I was a little boy. He was the superintendent of the Sunday school. And uh, y'all may not believe this, but sometimes I didn't want to go to Sunday school, and I hid in the chairs. And uh, Rem, Rem Pittman would come and find you and, and take you to Sunday school and then tell, tell your mama where he found you. <laughs> Amen. But we, we certainly thank God for Reverend Pittman. Uh, Reverend Pittman uh, pastors the Poplar Spring uh, Missionary Baptist Church for 41 years. And uh, he also uh, pastors... Um, promised land uh, did I say 51 I mean 41 years he has pastored both of them for 41 years amen somebody amen great great preacher and he's going to come in his own way uh, after which our choir is going to now lead us in a message of song and the next voice you would hear of that of Reverend Henry Pittman
Can we say amen? amen. Say amen again. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. My daughter's supposed to be here. Is she here? Dana, you here? Huh? Come up here, dear. I got something to ask you. I ain't going to. Look, I'm going to make sure I get you all out before 12 o'clock. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't believe in putting nobody to sleep. God is good. All the time, God is good. So, I will verify and pass the Pastor Johnson. Pulpit, yes. Offers of this church. Mothers. Very fine singing choir. Ushers, members, extended church family. It's just good to be here. Well, I got my start. Thought the preaching here at morning started first time, 2000. No, 1982, June the 27th, 1982. Start passing March, the second Sunday in March in 83. And been at the same place the rest of the time. God hadn't been, but God is good to me yes, sir. Yes, sir. right now. Yes, and you know, I I thank Him for just being God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I always were taught, if you do right, right will follow you. Love the people, love the sheep that God has made you oversee. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And you always put the sheep before yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a living witness yes, yes, that God will, yes, will. I know make will. a way somehow. Yes, 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 God has blessed me to build two buildings. And all of them paid for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, neither church owed nobody a dime. Yes, sir. No, no. And I thank God for that. Yeah. 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 Now, it ain't been easy. Mm -hmm. But through it all. Yes, sir. Yeah. Through it all. Through it all. We made it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to hold you long. In the book of Matthew, The 16th chapter. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Reverend. Let's see. And we're just going to read the 13th verse. Yes, sir. Stay on. When Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, well, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? All right. All right. Christ wants to be. Identified in you. All right. Christ yes, sir. want to be mm -hmm. identified 
in you. Christ want to be identified in you. And we just don't identify Christ just on Sunday morning. To be a child of God, you're supposed to be a child 365 days out of a year. And in order to be a child of God, you first got to know him. Saying it don't mean too much. But when you know him, you don't have to tell nobody, I'm a child of God. Ways and action speak louder than words. Paul said these words, say, if any man, therefore if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old thing, old idea, old habit, old attitude. Yes, Hello, it's done away with. And did you not know our attitude determine our altitude? Yes, sir. If we got a meek attitude, God gonna bless us. But if we got a haughty attitude, yes, he can't bless us yeah. because we ain't got nothing, but we want to, don't want to speak to nobody, yeah. don't want to treat nobody right yeah. because we feel like we're more than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? But with a meek attitude, over in Matthew the fifth chapter of my mind sermon right in the fifth verse, it said, Blessed are the meek, yes, sir. Yes, sir. for they shall inherit the earth. Yes. See, God know who to bless yes. and who not to bless. Yes. Huh? See, if I ain't speaking driving a Volkswagen, he ain't gonna bless me with a roll roll. Yes. Huh? But see, I got to realize whatever God give me, he don't give me to look down on nobody else. Huh? He blessed me that I might be a blessing to somebody else. Can I get a witness? Now, Matthew write this. Yes, sir. It said when they came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, yes, sir. All right. Jesus called the disciples in the question by saying, I know you've been out there. Mm -hmm. All right. huh? And I know why you were out there, folk were talking. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? What I want to know, whom do you mean? Say that I, the Son of Man, am. Mm -hmm. What are they saying about me? Yeah. Well, huh? They talking. Huh? I know that, on, look, on the physical side, on man's side, Jesus knew they were talking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, on God's side, he knew what they were saying. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. But he wanted to ask his disciples, said, now, nah, what are they saying about me? Well, but the disciples didn't do like a lot of us. They didn't bring back a negative report. Yeah. Well, huh? yeah. Everything they talked about was, was uh, uh, not negative, but positive. Yes, huh? He said, well, Lord, if you want to know the truth, yeah. they don't know who you are. They don't really know. Yes, sir. Out of all what you have done, yes. they still don't know. Still don't know. Out of all he have done for us as a race of people, yes, 
We still don't know him. Huh? Because if we knowed him, we'll stop killing. If we knew who he was, we'll love everybody. Huh? If we knew who he was. Huh? You know what I We would help those that they need. And when we help them, we won't be looking for something in return. Well, Lord, if you want me to tell you, some say that you're John the Baptist. And, and we know that you're not John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist said, there is one coming after me that was fought before me. The shoes I'm not wearing to stoop down and unlash. And see, I'm baptizing you with water. But one coming after me going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. We know you're not that. And, and, and some say you're Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Huh? Je Look, we, 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 we know that you are not Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jeremiah cried all the time. Yes, sir. And Lord, you can't wipe my tear if you've got to wipe your own tear. Some say. Some say that you're Eli. Uh -huh. yeah. But we know that when Eli was at Mount Carmel, yes, sir. Well, well. Eli had to talk to you yeah, yeah. to rain down fire. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. And, and, and we know that you're not Eli. And some say uh -huh. that you are Jeremiah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well. Huh? Not only that, Jeremiah. Je 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 Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He yes, sir. cried a lot. Uh -huh. Hold on. And we know that you're not Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Well, well, yeah. Some say that you are Elijah yes, or one of the prophets. Yes, sir. But Jesus, but Jesus said to him, say, but whom? Say you that I ain't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've been with me a long time. Yes, sir. You watched all of the miracles that I performed. Yes, sir. If anybody know who I am, you ought to know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, if anybody know who Jesus is, black folks ought to know. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. He brought us. From rubble heel yeah. to rubble wheel. Yeah. He brought us from neck bone yes, sir. to T bone. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he brought us all the way. Now, I ain't saying a long way, he yeah. brought us all the way. Yeah. And we ought to be able to tell the world who Jesus is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peter, you done told me all of this. But whom do you say that I am? Yes, sir. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, yeah. the Son of a living God. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Peter. I don't want you to think you're small. Uh -huh. See, because you might get above yourself. Yes, Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, yes, but it was my Father which is in heaven. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Peter, even though I'm the son of the living God, yeah. I want you to know, Peter, I'm the dying Savior. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting ready to die right. for the sin sick of the world. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go through an unjust code. Yeah. Right. They're going to try me all night long. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not only that, Peter, they're going to find me guilty. Yeah. Not only guilty of I'm not guilty for myself, Peter, but I'm guilty for you yeah. Yeah. and the entire world. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Yes, They're going to put me on an old rugged cross. Yeah. I'm going to die out there on that cross. Yes, sir. After dying, they're going to take me down from the cross and put me in a, a barry tomb. Yes, sir. 
But I ain't going to stay there for three days. But early the third day morning, I'm going to get out of that grave and declare that all power in heaven is in my hand. I'm glad about it. I'm glad he did that. Because once he died, I won't have to die no more. Because I have taken him for my sake. He died that I might live. He got up that I might live. But one of these days, I'm going to get out of here. And I thank God for dying for me. I don't know about you, but I thank God for dying for me. He didn't have to do it, but I thank God that he did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is so much that the Lord has done for me. Oh, yeah. When I I was a sinner, he set me free. Yes, he did. All of my burden, he helped me back. All of my sorrow. God help me to share. I can't pay the Lord. Oh, I sure can tell him. Lord, thank you, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I would not be ungrateful as all, as all the Lord has done. He gave me just a little more courage. All this Christian race around. Oh, one thing I check out, I can't forget the Lord, the Lord have never, never, never failed me yet. door of the church is open if you're here this morning and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. This is an invitation for you to come just now. You don't have to fix yourself or make yourself right. Jesus hung, bled, and died for your sins. Rose the third day with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. This morning I invite you to give your life to him. Trust him to make your life brand new. This invitation is to you once you come today. I don't know that one real well. I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Mm, 
other ministers of the gospel, Morning Star officers, Morning Star members, visiting friends. We're blessed to have Brother Derek Hall coming by Christian Experience. Brother Darrell's been right here a long time, and we're thankful for his commitment on this morning. Brothers, hearing his testimony, what would be your pleasure? Any debate or discussion, all in favor, shout amen. amen. Any opposes, you have the same privilege. My brothers, we're delighted to have you to become a part, a regular member of Morning Star Baptist Church. And we ask that you share with us a four weeks of orientation period, and after which you extend the right hand of fellowship, and you have every right and privilege as any other member. I pray between now and heaven, you won't need another church. Amen. Yeah, Bless you, my brother. <laughs> Bless you, my brother. Bless you. Man, did not our hearts burn within us as the man of God has spoken to us uh, by the wayside? We're thankful for each of you. We thank you all for coming, for worshiping with us on today. And uh, I thank you for your patience uh, uh, on this morning as we've come to worship him in, in spirit and in truth. Uh, listen, what a blessing. 50 years. Uh, we give God, we give God praise for it. Uh, uh, we're on our way out of here, y'all. We're, we're going to give the benediction, but I, I just have one thing I want to share with you. Uh, um, last couple of years, a uh, uh, person in our family had celebrated birthday, and I recognized everybody's birthday, but I forgot hers. And, uh, you know, that can be a long trip home, y'all. <laughs> and uh, But uh, uh, on today, uh, we uh, I just want to take just a minute to recognize Sister Paulette Johnson's 58th birthday. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm going to ask her to stand, and there are some, uh, some persons uh, have a small token for you on today. Amen. If you don't mind coming on down, Paulette. Amen. Y'all, this has been the hardest job uh, to, keep, to keep this a secret. But uh, we, we had sent a message, and I asked the Smiths family if I could do this. Uh, but uh, uh, we've asked her family, her friends, her co-workers, uh, uh, and all the members of this church, our classmates, have all contributed. And, and uh, we, we sent cards, a bouquets of cards, uh, just to know, to let you know how much we love you. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, it's, it's 
money, <laughs> but this gift was sent anonymously. This is for you for your birthday. Yes, and we also have a, a cake. This is one of two, one of two cakes from Reverend Parker. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, this is from our, your sister friends from the Praying Parents uh, Sunday School class. <laughs> I know we're going to go back. I tell you one last thing. Uh, we have also, immediately after the worship service is over, you got 30 minutes to go home and finish packing. Because <laughs> there's a trip <laughs> for you for the next five days. And uh, I talked to your boss, and we cleared your calendar for the rest of the week. <laughs> And you, tomorrow morning, you'll wake up on the beach. Listen, I just, uh, listen, I thank God for Paulette, you all. Uh, not only does she take care of our family, but I was teasing with her last week. She had mission where she had to teach. She had daughters of destiny she had to teach. She had to teach Sunday school. I told her, you do more teaching than I do. <laughs> and, uh, but she's been a jewel to all of us. And I want to thank all of you all for contributing to this. Uh, you all made it a great, great success. We love you. And uh, happy birthday to you. I am overwhelmed and um, humbled and grateful um, just for all of this. And I don't even have the words, and that's rare that I don't have some words to say. But um, I thank my husband, first of all, my pastor um, for the love and just for each one of you. And I think everybody knows um, that I love my church family. You know, no matter what, I love, I say, my people. And I, I appreciate um, just the freedom that you all give me that I could just be me, you know. And I don't, I'm not trying to be like nobody else, and I don't have to wear a hat. And, you know, I just, the freedom and, and to allow me to minister in my own way, I am just grateful. Um, just for all of this, um, my heart is overwhelmed, and um, I don't, pour tears out. My doctor could tell you why. But, uh, but inside, my eyeballs are just bubbling over. And um, I thank God. I just, I thank God for how he has kept me. Um, I used to hear old folks say, through danger seen and unseen. I've lived through some danger seen and unseen and how he has blessed my health um, and how he has blessed me with a good husband that loves me like I know if nobody loves me I know he loves me and my children who um, I love being with you know it's it's a blessing to have children that you teach and all but to hang out with your kids and and my son you know and when when I go out with my son he treat me like a lady you know you step off the curb he right there you know I'm just blessed my family and my best friend is here. My best friend next to John is here. Vera and, and Willis, y'all stand up. I saw them when they came in. I thought, what are they doing here? <laughs> but um, I just thank God for um, just, just, just all of this. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and I'm grateful. And um, I, just, I just ask that for God to keep me you know, in the path, as the old folks would say, and that he would just keep me. I mean, I just love God. I love this man, but I love God more than anything. And I, I love how he keeps me and protects me. And I know it's, it's time to go. Okay. <laughs> but thank you all so much. Thank you all again. If all hearts and minds satisfy, let us stand together.
God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We thank you, O oh God, for this day and all of your blessings. We thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. We thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Dismiss us now, not from this place, but never dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Go with us, stand by us, guide us, and strengthen us. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go in his peace on today.